Highness Princess Alexandra of Kent sets foot on Australian soil for the first time. The Governor-General Sir William Slim meets her. The Prime Minister and Dame Patty Menzies are presented, and after meeting other officials and saying goodbye to the crew of her plane, the Princess walks to inspect the Royal Guard of Honour. She doesn't seem to notice it, but one of the lads apparently has his cap at a too jaunty angle. The airport ceremony is brief, but the smiling young princess immediately wins the people's hearts. The leader of the opposition, Dr. Evatt, and Mrs. Evatt are presented. Princess Alexandra quickly demonstrates that this is to be an informal tour, as she breaks away to speak to a party of junior Red Cross girls standing behind the barricades, which hold back the 5,000 people who saw her arrive. On Sunday morning, she attends service at Historic St. John's, and again her warmth and charm are very much in evidence. The Governor-General presents the Bishop of Canberra-Goulburn, Dr. Bergman, and Bishop R.G. Arthur, Rector of St. John's. And then there's an unexpected thrill for young scouts and cubs as the vivacious young princess walks over to talk with them. More than 2,000 people are outside the church to see the royal visitor, and she smiles happily as she walks towards the front door. With her visit to Australia only just beginning, Princess Alexandra already has set a new pattern of informality. The following day begins with a visit to the National War Memorial, a sombre moment for the young princess, whose father, the Duke of Kent, was killed when his RAF plane crashed on a lonely Scottish moor. She knows the personal tragedy of war. Now she leaves for Monica Oval, and a boisterous, noisy welcome from hundreds upon hundreds of Canberra's schoolchildren. In an open Land Rover, she drives around the fence of the Oval, waving and smiling at the youngsters who give her a tremendous reception. Cheered to the echo, the young princess drives in triumph, and the youngsters forget the biting cold as they wave and yell. Then, all too soon, it's time to say goodbye again. She has talked to some of them, she has won all their hearts, but there are other engagements she must keep. Parliament House is ablaze with lights, and 2,000 people line the barriers to cheer as the Prime Minister and Dame Patty Menzies welcome their visitor, a sparkling princess whose diamonds and tiara glitter as she gives a final wave to the crowd before moving through the lane of curtsying guests into King's Hall. On arrival at a special low dais, Sir William Slim and Lady Slim attend the royal guest, and as a tribute from the people of the Commonwealth, a diamond, ruby and tourmaline brooch is presented by Mr. Menzies. Dame Patty pins it on. Then the dancing begins, and Mr. Gordon Preeth, 45 years old Minister for the Interior, partners her in the Alexandra Waltz, specially written for the occasion. It's Young People's Night, and the youngest member of Parliament, Mr. Douglas Anthony of the Country Party, is another partner, as Queensland's centenary guest concludes her visit to the federal capital in a glittering state ball. <laughs>